who'd like to start off? I'll start. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Chaston, the co-founder of the Chaston Centre. We help businesses to assist their employees to become more productive, to actually come to work loving their job and in turn creating more profits for the company. As a small business, I really do not have any frustration with the CRM system because it all Oh, thank you. Next. Eric Chung, CEO of Business Growth and Exit Specialists. We are boutique management consult. And exciting to see everyone here today. Thank you. I have a couple of different, <laughs> I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I've got a couple of different businesses, business coaching. We've got an RTO where we deliver certificate for in leadership and management and business strategy. We, uh, in my 30 plus years in business, I've only just now started to think about, oh, maybe I need a CRM. So I'm excited to hear uh, what Jill has to share because I have thousands and thousands of people on spreadsheets. So thank you. Um, thank you, Jill. Next person, I would you like to, Leah? Thank you, Denise. And hi, everyone. I'm Leah Zalams and I'm the, the CEO and founder of Z. Axis Leadership Consultancy, and I focus very much on CEO coaching, national hyper improve the performance of the CEO and their teams, but primarily in the personal leadership space uh, is my um, specialty area, and. Um, my challenge with CRM is I am now getting to a stage in my business. I'm Well, where I am now, because it's in the medical sector, we've got rules and regulations about what we can do as far as marketing to patients. So there's a lot of restrictions. Um, we have a weight loss program that we, you know, that we use in the in the um, in the practice, which I want to be able to market that more freely once COVID is finished. So I'm keen to hear what you've got to say so that we can um, put the processes in place now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, what about who are we? Sarah? No, we've had Sarah. Mm. Scott. I think it's about time one of the men told us why they're here and so on. The women have been doing an awesome job. <laughs> All right, I'm up. All right. So um morning everyone. <clears throat> My name's Scott Barber. I'm the chief commercial officer for a company called Quantico. Uh, we provide business advisory services to the hospitality industry and my frustration with CRM is that we have three so uh, <laughs> all date. Um, I'm going to pick uh, Michael hi everyone from the Antarctic as you can um, so my name is Michael Bartura I run an outfit called the happy habits uh, coaching I'm also an associate of the Asian Leadership Institute. Um, I work primarily with uh, people who I call um, successful, but looking for significance. So these are the people who ticked all the boxes in terms of what society tells us success is, and they still scratch their head and say, there must be more to life than this. 
Um, so meaning, purpose, legacy, that sort of stuff. Um, I haven't done CR in my own business uh, so far because most of my clientele is kind of bespoke, but I'm looking to scale up and line program together. So it just occurred to me it's probably a good time to listen in and figure out <laughs> some more details on CRM. Thank you. Okay, has anyone not had a go? Oh, maybe I will as well. Yes? well uh, hi, everyone. I am Jan. I run my own sustainability consultancy specializing in early childhood and schools sector to make them more sustainable. And that means environmentally, but also more compliant, for example, not having poisonous plants on premises because a lot of them do and energy efficiency and waste management and that sort of stuff. So I've got thousands of uh, line items on spreadsheets. I, I'm not at that stage of being sophisticated enough in my business to have clear systems, but I think it's something I should need to, should, you know, uh, pay attention to. So that's why I'm here. So thanks very much for this webinar. Okay. All right. How are we going? Anyone not had a go? Well, there's Christina San JR. Okay. Uh, well, I think I'll go. Uh, nice to meet everyone. My name. Financial. It's kind of similar to what someone else mentioned before. Consolidate. again ever and um, when I walked in and I said are you serious I wish I'd been able to say are you serious here's the lady to talk to so I'm really excited to be in the room and learn more thanks for having me Marianne you haven't Hi, had a go Marianne. you just said you muted, Marianne. you're still muted <laughs> Uh, here we are. Okay. Christine. I'll, I'll go in the meantime, Adrian. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Jeff Hirsch. I'm the uh, co founder and CEO of Business Builders Group. So, we help uh, small business owners and leaders to accelerate their growth through learning, collaboration, and the generation of warm referrals and introductions. My experience with CRM is the biggest frustration is actually getting people to use it. And uh, so you can have the, the greatest uh, can't get your to embrace it and, and use it in a, a proper constructive way. Uh, it's just a piece of technology. So interested in that, Jill. Okay. Wendy? Hi, I'm Wendy Crane from Switchman Power Supplies. I look after the kind of office there and I'm just interested to see what Microsoft Dynamics offers. Welcome. Okay, that's another one. Okay. And Shane has just joined us. Let's see. And Adrian, um, Christine has written yes. in the chat that she worked with Power Suppliers, which is a responsible for keeping the database up to date. It's been in existence for many years and it needs constant work to keep it up to date. Yep. Okay, that's great. Marion, you can, you can finally... talk about holding it on the space bar. There you go. Yeah, I've done it now. Hi, I'm Marion Smith. Um, my, my company is the Barrow Group. I've got an IT and cybersecurity background, and I've been, uh, I'm currently recruit, uh, doing some recruitment, but also coaching senior executives um, on their value proposition and their resume, uh, doing their resume as well. Um, I have uh, a spreadsheet, so I'm really interested. I want to move into getting a database. I'm very interested in what I'm getting here today. So thank you for having me. Okay, all righty. Well, we're going to go back to our presentation. I think everybody has, uh, has introduced themselves. Hey. What about Shane, Adrian? Shane, Shane, sorry, Shane, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Good. Shane says, good morning. Having some major bandwidth issues and I have to share that with him. So excuse if, uh, if I'm uh, disconnecting and reconnecting. Uh, there seems to be something going on in the internet at the moment, but we will continue regardless. They're actually, uh, there's putting in the NBN up your way, Adrian. That's what the problem is. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. I've been putting the NBN in for years. <laughs> no, apparently it's official. It was on the news yet last night. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. Good luck. <laughs> Must be true. <laughs> Well, yes, it's the, uh, okay, well, we'll go back to the, the sharing the screen and the presentation. It's been really lovely to hear everyone and, and why you're here. So uh, today's presentation and theme is the five ways to increase business with your CRM. And uh, Jill Walker is a guest speaker for today and uh, regardless of your industry successful customer relationship management tools can improve your profit this morning we'll hear the five ways to increase business profit with crm so please welcome jill walker now uh jill you want me to stop screen sharing so you can uh well go have on. people got the the slide or not the slide but the can people see both me i need to move back and my slides yeah well, okay i can't see, can't see you we can't see you just your shoulder that's but, fine uh, for the minute yeah what everyone can do is if you want to you can go to. to the screen you but yeah you can speak as well as the main the main image so to do that, if you go top right hand corner of Jill's screen, you can, um, there's a three little dots. And you, when you, when you, it says they um, pin to screen. And in that way, you'll have Jill as the main person that you're seeing as opposed to anybody else. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. If you just do speak of you in the top right hand corner, that will give you the same. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, so is that giving you me and yes we can see you yes. as on the slide now Jill excellent okay thank you Adrian I'd like to welcome everybody to this session and I think I need to preface it by saying based in that quick run around that we did if I of I am very very happy to have a further chat with any of you five ways that you can increase your business profit with CRM profit to that next level. But before we do that, I want to de what is it to you personally? the answering profit and I'll give you about a minute to do that And if anyone's got any questions, please do sing out.
Do you want us to read out some of them, Jill? If you would like to, please do. Yes, just pick and choose. Okay. Uh, here's, oh, there's Cassandra, revenue, less expenses after dividends. Um, so that's a very monetary definition, which is fine. Okay. Uh, Michael. Do we have any non monetary ones? Uh, so I've, I've one. What is left after expenses are paid and shows your profit is, shows your business is growing? Marianne? Uh, the majority are financial. Okay. So that was is what I would expect. But the beauty of CRM is while for sure it can help your business get more profit, so all of those things that you have given us, but it can do a lot more than that. So if you are in a customer service environment, for example, the advantage or benefit that might be relevant to you would be potentially getting either more cases solved or more cases in less time. If you're in a not-for-profit environment, it may be getting more volunteers to support the organization or being able to run more events. If you're in a more marketing focus, the profit might be getting more campaigns happening or more effective campaigns. So there are lots and lots of ways that CRM can help you achieve that profit other than the pure dollar. And I think it's very important to remember that. I'm surprised how often I hear from people things like I'm in the medical environment, therefore I don't need a CRM, or I'm in a not-for-profit, therefore we can't have a CRM and lots and lots of other similar type comments that are very, very untrue. So what I'm now looking at is those five ways, regardless of how of your line of business, five ways that you can increase the profit of your business. And those five are, you can get more leads. You can get more conversions from those leads, more sales from those customers, bigger sales from those customers, and more profit from each of those sales. So there we've got the, they are the only five ways, regardless of what your profit is, they are the only five ways that you can get more profit into a business. I'm now going to take you through all of those five and we'll talk about them to a degree. And I will show you and illustrate how Microsoft Dynamics 365, which is one of about 400 CRM technologies, how it might look if you achieve that. So first of all, we need to look at leads and a whole range of metrics we could measure. How many active leads do you have at any given time? But what is perhaps more important is how do you know where to invest your effort to get more leads? Where do your leads come from? And what I'd like people to do now is to put in the chat where your leads come from. And again, I'll give you a minute to think about that. So if everybody could jump into the chat, and tell me where the majority or some of your leads come from. I'm not at the moment worried about whether they're good leads or less good leads, 
but where do they come from? Is Sarah saying senior staff and executive? So Jeff, referrals. Jeff saying refer, referrals and events. Karen, uh, networking and word of mouth. Uh, Judith Rose was uh, speaking. Uh, Leah, referrals. Eric, referrals and networking events. Christina, repeat customer business. Uh, Michael, word of mouth, speaking. In, in, uh, send sales team. Okay. Jim. Wendy, repeat business, existing customers. Cassandra, GPs and specialists. Nina, Google ads and returning customers. Awesome. awesome. So thank you for that. If we were to analyze those in detail, I think you would find that most people get their leads from some variation on these six. But the $6 million question is if you are getting leads from some variation on these six sources, which of them are the most effective? So where are the majority of your leads coming from? And once you know that, you can invest more of your effort into those lead sources, providing the good quality leads and less effort into the ones that are providing poor quality leads. CRM can also help you increase the number of those people coming to your website who share contact details with you using marketing automation. So this aspect of marketing automation is where you have a lead magnet of some description and you only let people have it when they pay you, but not pay you in money, pay you with an email address. And obviously that email address can then go on to a marketing list and we can maintain contact and stay top of mind with those people. Now, that's only one thing that marketing automation can do. And there's a lot of other things that CRM also can do. If you were using Microsoft Dynamics 365 and also a number of other CRM technologies, you would likely be able to get to a chart similar to this one. So this one is showing quite simply the proportion of leads from each of those six lead sources. Obviously the lead sources would be configured to match whatever makes sense to you. You may choose to keep them relatively broad as they are here, or you may want to break them down even more. So to give an example that someone else mentioned earlier, you might want to know rather than just referrals, maybe it's more relevant to know how many are coming from GPs, versus other medical professionals. That would be a very easy thing to split out, assuming you capture the information. Again, from dynamics, you may choose, rather than just having the chart, to have it looking like this. So I've got that same chart, but then next to it, I have got the list of leads. Now, if any of you are concerned that I'm talking out of school and giving away lots of personal information that I shouldn't be doing, please rest assured that all of the data that I am using in this presentation is completely fictitious. I spent a chunk of the weekend working it out and pulling it into a version of Dynamics, which is also purely a sample. So. I've been able to leave this data where you can read it, but it really is not, it's not real data. 
So that's one very simple page that may well be of use to you in Dynamics. Dynamics also gives us a lot of dashboards. And this slide gives you a dashboard based on that same data where we've got lead by rating, lead by source again, and a couple of other charts. I've also got put in the bottom left hand corner, one that's related to users and which of our contacted versus new, i.e. not yet contacted leads by employee. So obviously that is beneficial to a lot of people. So now moving on, once we're getting our leads, what we now need to do is to make more of those leads go all the way through our funnel and become paying customers. In other words, we need to convert them from prospects to leads to clients or customers. And the key to that is follow-up. And there are many, many ways that any decent CRM tool can help with follow-up. Making contact within an hour of a lead coming in is seven times more likely to get results than following up later. It's actually 60 times more likely to get results than if you wait a day before reaching out. Now, obviously, that is a generalization, and it will be, it's a survey done across a wide range of businesses. But while the 60 times won't, may not be relevant to you and the business that you're in, I can guarantee that a rapid follow up will be more effective than leave it to languish and follow up sometime later. One of the things that supports this is I'm sure all of you, when you are interested in a purchase, be that a product or a service, the chances are you do your research and you look at multiple companies. Let's say you approach five companies for whatever product or service you are interested in. It stands to reason that the person who reaches out and has a conversation with you about your issues and the challenges that you've got, the reason that you were on their website or downloaded the lead magnet or whatever you did, maybe sent an email, is more interested in your business than the person that allows it to sit in some inbox for however long. If you've got CRM set up and properly configured, the incoming leads can be allocated to the appropriate person in real time. So that helps you with that rapid follow up. A true CRM solution can also create and schedule follow-up tasks for each salesperson, and or it can send them emails or SMSs notifying a staff member of a new lead. So things that improve conversion, we've got a number of them, but the first is speed of follow-up. The second is having automated and consistent sales follow-up processes. So that's where you have a process in your business where you know 
categorically that those leads are not falling through the cracks. And everyone is being reached out to in an appropriate way by an appropriately knowledgeable or qualified or whatever makes sense person. We also need to be able to give them comprehensive information. In other words, the person who does the follow up should be able to answer that person's questions. We don't want somebody just and saying, hi, I'm I work for this company. And then while they'd never say that, the implication being, I know next to nothing about it, but if you'd like me to, I'll make you an appointment with the CEO. That is rarely what a lead wants. There also should be easy communication between the prospect and the organization. And again, CRM makes that possible because all of the interactions can be recorded and tracked. So when we're making a subsequent call, we know everything of all the important stuff that has gone on previously with those earlier calls. Even if we're not the person who made all of those earlier calls. One of the things that CRM does, if it's set up correctly, is it takes the I out of team, or it takes the I away and creates a true team, because that information is shared with everybody, but not everybody, it's everybody who needs it. So we only get the information that is relevant to our role. A true CRM solution can also have automated sales follow-up templates. So an email can go out maybe immediately, maybe with some time delay, but based on the information that the lead has given you, that template can be selected. And therefore, even though it's a templated communication, it is specific to that leads inquiry. And of course, it can be personalized. So I am sure you've all received the dear valued customer or dear lead type emails. And I know I personally think the last thing I feel on receiving that sort of email is valued. What CRM will also give you is a better and stronger qualification process. If you know by looking at previous leads that the leads from this industry or this person type or avatar are more likely to convert, the CRM can collect that data. So you put the effort into there and that gives you or helps to give you a stronger qualification process. The final piece, that analysis and reporting piece should also be part of any CRM solution. What we've got here is that chart again that shows us the follow-up data. And it's that same chart that I flagged earlier where by staff member we can see how many of their leads have been contacted and how many haven't been contacted. And based on that, who is doing the better job. So that's another example of what that might look like in dynamics. I mentioned earlier lead magnets. This is an example of a lead magnet. It is a form on our website. And you fill in 
a relatively small amount of information. All that we're requiring is first name and a business email. And then off the back of that, you will receive that ebook, Five Fundamentals of a Foolproof CRM Implementation Strategy. That is part of campaign automation. And what campaign automation does is automates the communication between those early stage leads. So those leads who are unlikely to buy from you in the next 90 days. And not surprisingly to many people, that is approximately 95% of the people who wander onto your website, maybe download a lead magnet, they may phone in, but 95% of inbound leads that are sitting at the top of the funnel will not buy from you in the next 90 days. So campaign automation gives you a way of staying in touch with those people with relatively low effort. And an example of campaign automation is this slide here. So this is specifically to engage prospects. And what we've got is a series of activities that once somebody has been put into this campaign, the rest of that just happens. No user input whatsoever. This particular example comes from Click Dimensions, which works exclusively with Dynamics. But one of the things that you can see on this slide, do you notice how some of those orange dots have got both a green line and a red line? What that is, is if somebody takes the particular action, they follow the green line and then get that series of emails sent to them. If they don't take whatever the trigger in that orange box is, they go down a different path and get a different set of emails. Those actions sitting inside the blue boxes could be emails, they could be phone calls, they could be SMSs, any way there is of reaching out to people. And obviously what that is doing is keeping your organization top of mind. So then down the track, they, when they are in a situation of really wanting to progress that interaction further, your business is much more likely to be the one that is top of mind than all of the people that they went onto the website and that was the end of that. So talking of follow-up, I now want to look at how many follow-ups do you have to do to get a sale? And what I can tell you is this number is increasing. But the answer, the global answer, and the answer that doesn't change is that it is more than most salespeople think. At the moment, it is taking between eight and 18 contacts to get a sale. In other words, you need to touch a prospect between eight and 18 times, depending on the business, the value of sale, and so on, to get to a sale. However, a lot of salespeople give up well before they get to that level. So 42% of salespeople give up after one no. Then it goes up to uh, give up after two no's, after three no's, 
after four no's, and by no, I don't mean absolutely no, I'm not interested, but in essence, what we're saying is at the moment, that's not something I'm focusing on. That 92% who've given up after four no's, what that means is that there are 8% of sales remaining. So 92% of salespeople have given up after four no's. And only 8% of salespeople ask for the order that fifth time. 80% of prospects will say no four times. So 8% of us are getting the bulk of the business. It's really quite frightening when we think how many of those leads are just being abandoned. This is another example of what that data might look like in dynamics. And here we're seeing goals. So this is a dashboard where I have set up that I want my sales team to make 50 calls per day. And that chart is showing how, what the progress towards that target is. The bottom one, again, is by salesperson. The left two charts are some further examples. Follow-up also helps us with another two of those five, and that is increasing the number of sales. So once we've worked, so we've got sale number one from somebody, we are much more likely to get sale two, sale three, if we keep in contact with them. We are also likely to get bigger sales because that relationship has been developed. And just in conversation, you might hear that they are looking for something which is a service or a product that you can provide, but right now that prospect doesn't know about it. So just by saying, yes, we can also do sales consulting, we can also provide you with pink widgets, that has given you a bigger sale. So now we've understood four of the five ways that we can increase our profit. This slide looks at the fifth way. And this is getting more profit from each individual sale. So what you can see there, and I apologize, it is a little bit small, but as well as seeing the product that we are suggesting to a prospect, I've also configured CRM so that it shows the profit margin. So I've got two similar products on that opportunity and I can see both the price and the profit margin. So I know which of those products is both the most expensive and the most profitable. That is also useful if a salesperson is tempted to start discounting because as they supply discounts, the profit for that sale will be recalculated and it discourages people from discounting to a point that the sale is costing you money, not making you money. And that's just another slide that shows a similar piece where we can see all of that data and another version again. So, now that I've gone through the five ways that you can increase profit to your business, how many of you feel that with a suitable tool, you could increase some of those by 10%? What I'd like you to do for me is raise your hand if you think you could improve 5%. 
five of those by 10%. Only four, three, two, and one. So I hope by now everybody metaphorically raised. So now I want to test your math. We're now in a situation where we've agreed that we could improve some or all of those factors by 10%. So what is the answer to that sum? And I'd like people to put in the chat what they think the overall increase in profit would be if we increase the number of leads the conversion rate, the size of sale, the frequency of sale, and the profit from each sale by 10%. And again, I'll give you just 30 seconds to put your suggested answer into the chat. Okay. We've got here the power of small incremental change. Yes. 860%, approximately 1,000% uh, of course in each five areas, 1,100%. Uh, that would be nice. 600%, unlimited. Okay, it is limited, unfortunately. And the correct answer is 61. And on the next slide, I'm going to give you the proof. So if we had 100 leads, it would become 110. If we increase the conversion from 30%, it would become 33%. And that means that our customers have gone from 30 to 36.3. And then the size of the purchase and the frequency so the revenue per lead per period has gone from 60 to 80, 88. And overall, that means that the increase in the profit from new leads per period has gone from $18,000 with the old model to $29,000. And if you want to check my maths, 61%. there is the proof. So it is well worth putting effort in to some of the areas. Now, what I've talked about so far this morning is only one small area of what CRM is. And I've touched on dynamics. One of the things that I'd really like to highlight is that CRM is a lot more than a database. A true CRM solution will include sales tools, marketing tools, customer service tools, tools that help you manage the inter customers and tools that help you see the data and know what is going on. So I'm now going to look at what is CRM really. There are probably as many questions of CRM as people that you ask the question. Some people will give you very academic definitions. Other people will give you technical definitions. Others will give you marketing definitions and yet more will give you sales definitions. All of those are actually correct. What I can assure you is that many people are unaware of the breadth of CRM and therefore how it can best help them. So a definition of CRM that I like is this one. 
So CRM helps the people who are helping your customers know what they need to know, when they need to know it, to get on better with your clients throughout the lifetime of the association between you and them. So what that should highlight is it is much more about the process and the philosophy. Sure, technology is important and no successful CRM solutions will exist in 2021 or even a good bit earlier than that without some technology support. But it is a lot more than a database. So what I'm now looking at is successful CRM. So successful CRM delivers benefit to the business. It has a high level of user adoption. So the users really do use it. They don't keep spawning out into Excel. The data is trusted. It's easy for users to use. And finally, it tends towards WORM. And what WORM stands for is right once read many. So overall in your system, from the point that that prospect first ventures onto your website or comes into your world by whatever way they come into your world, each element of data should only be entered once. And then the system should take that through so that that element of data is available to everybody who needs it when they need it. That sounds simple, but in fact, any successful CRM solution is balanced on a knife edge. And that knife edge is sitting between the technology and what it does and the business. Leading a CRM project, you also are on that knife edge. And just like our friend here, you've probably got both arms extended and you are balancing so you don't fall onto the technology side or onto the total business side. You need to keep yourself well and truly on that knife edge. Well, I'm running out of time. In fact, I've probably overrun, but I hope I have tickled some of the points for you. That slide there is some references, and I hope that that will get put in the chat for you. And anybody who would like to talk to me, I am, of course, very happy to talk to anyone and my contact details are there and courtesy of another member of this group there is also a qr code that will take you to our website and with that i will now hand back to adrian jill just just before um you hand back to adrian the question that comes from, i love that knife edge um shot could you just share a little bit exactly of your role, you know, with CRM? Like, what, how do you help companies? How I help companies is with enabling them to achieve that successful CRM. And that's a multi-step process. So there'll be a lot of learning and learning on both sides, because obviously if I were to come into pretty much anyone on the calls business, I know next to nothing about what you do. So I need to learn about your business. Where I am somewhat different to a lot of people is you as a project lead in this will benefit through learning about the technology that you either already have 
or you are about to select, or maybe learning about two or three technologies to enable you to make the right choice. However, another point that I'd like to make, these CRM projects rarely fail because an organization chose technology A rather than technology B. The vast majority of failures are human decisions. And that might be poor processes implemented. It might be inadequate testing. It might be even earlier in the steps because no scoping was done. And that one's a real doozy because if you don't know what you want the project to achieve, how are you going to know that the project has achieved its aims? And there's lots of other things that can go wrong, but they are always or nearly always human decisions, not because we chose technology A rather than technology B. So I hope that answers the question, Leah. So you, and so I would say, are you holding the hand of that person on the knife edge or are you on the knife edge with them? Um, I'm probably on both sides at the same time. And every time they go to fall off one way, I'll just give them a bit of a shove. So they go back and I'm then around the other side and giving them a shove with the other hand. So I'm sort of keeping them on the knife edge. Um, or maybe I'm also on the knife edge, but two of us, can balance better than one, but I don't think that's probably true. Yeah. Anyway, it's probably time for us to get yeah. chucked into breakout rooms so that we can have some individual conversations about what we got out of this. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jill. I think everyone can give her a big round of applause. Uh, absolutely uh, valuable information there. Um, yes, we're going to break you out into various rooms. There'll be about four or five in each room. And uh, we're wanting you to discuss uh, what you got out of the presentation, uh, challenges that you have with, uh, with CRM and how you think uh, you can implement Jill's recommendations. And uh, right, and we can go into the various breakout rooms. Jim Rose is going to help us with the technology. So, Jill, um, what I'm going to do is maybe move you between the rooms so that you can talk with all the different people. Yep, that works. I think I need to rearrange things because I've got a lot of stuff I no longer need. All on good. My screen. So I've moved you into room one for the minute. I've broken us out into three rooms. Um, you should see a, a little sign up showing where I've introduced which room I put you into or invited you to join. Please, can you join yeah. that room? Do you know how to do that, everybody? Ah, yes. Click on join. You click that join button. Wendy? The webinar. Oh. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Okay, well, welcome back, everyone. We've got audio on, everything right? Okay, so uh, we'd like each of the rooms to share some of the learnings from your discussions. So who'd like to speak for room one? Okay, oh, room one, okay. Okay, go Carrot. Sorry, so I'm was I'm happy to well, we room, room one. one? Yeah, I, no, I, yeah, Leah, you want to speak for room one? Yeah, yeah, I'll speak. I'll always right. speak. Great. <laughs> we had uh, take out you um, put forward the eight to eighteen callbacks it takes, you know, to get um you know for conversions to happen and that sales reps give up after the fourth no and 92 percent of us give up after the fourth no um and that you know how pivotal knowing your numbers and managing your data is uh in 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 business growth and so we're all kind of grappling with 
uh, where we sit, you know, either as, as more soul, you know, practitioners, but, you know, I think the appreciation for uh, the numbers and the data and really giving that, um, uh, you know, more attention, uh, Jill's done a really great job with that. So, and I personally, I love that knife edge and the fact that it's the human factor that's the bottleneck. And it's the, the thing that everybody needs more help with is to be helped to be made, you know, help them make better decisions. So, you know, I thought that that was a highlight as well. Thank you, Leah. Okay, room two, who'd like to speak for room two? Um, that was Jeff and me, so I guess we both can. It was a similar uh, scenario. Most people sort of got stuck on the um, amount of contacts, but it is about also realising that sometimes we can hide behind our CRM systems and don't actually do the personal, you know, how can I help you? Is there anything, you know, in particular I can do? So it is about realising that you do need to at some stage even pick up the phone and get away from it. That's from my point mm. of view. Um, but yeah, most people were struggling with with the amount of contacts and then realizing yeah. what are they. Jeff, is there anything else you wanted to add? The other takeouts from that was uh, people recognized the need to respond quickly to leads, uh, the need to upgrade the reporting that the CRM system was giving them. Uh, the need to recognise that it's a complex project and needs to be chunked down and, and approached one piece at a time. You can't just tackle the whole thing up into small chunks. Um, and, you know, I think those were the, the main issues in addition to that, uh, you know, struggling to get our minds around how you maintain engagement for eight, 18 touch points. So, you know, those were the issues out of that group. I think there's a couple of points I'd like to add in. And one, which is a well-publicized statistic, is that it costs upwards of seven times as much to get a brand new client rather than to keep an existing client happy. And another point I'd like to make is those numbers around contacts. They are not all phone calls. So they could be a newsletter or a standard email or a LinkedIn message, Karen, or an SMS. Yeah. Now, not everything is appropriate for all businesses, for sure. But the word contact should not be translated to phone call. Yeah, I know that. So I, was, I was just saying, people and, forget that next step to actually pick it up. Absolutely. So some of them should be phone calls. I would agree with that, but I would also say not all of them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, room three. Uh, who'd like to speak for room three? Eric, were you there? Denise? Hi, everybody. It's got some noise in the background. If people could just quiet that. There's been a gentleman's voice quiet a bit of the time so if that person could just put on mute that'd be great thanks um yeah so we had some really interesting insights that people shared and we looked at what was the feeling and the thoughts when you thought about the word database and crm so that generated quite a bit of conversation and we realized that the database and the crm is really the heart of the business and so the question is is your heart beating is it sluggish is it you know does it need a top up so we recognize that sometimes we need to take things and go well, maybe it really is that pot of gold that needs to add value to your business so which was Eric's point we also you know Sarah had a really great insight that she's able to realize that maybe her proposals around it even though she does win you know lots of of jobs her proposal might need to have some refinements around this so Jill brought up lots of conversation in our group and everyone sort of started to look at what's the one thing they could do to, from that so thank you everybody in my group it was very lively conversations <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Denise. Yes. Now, we just have a couple more minutes. We're just a, we've got three more minutes until half past nine, and I want to value your time. So, has anyone got one burning question that they want to ask Jill whilst we're here? 
I've got a really important one, and this is the thing that Joel alluded to, which is the human element. And that is how, and that's something that most people find in their business. How do you get people to engage into a CRM and avoid the human element of not doing it? It's a big one, I know. Yes, and I think there's there's a number of different factors to that. One is making sure, first of all, that the CRM process meets the user's needs. Then make sure that the users know how to use it. And thirdly, make sure that the users understand the benefit for them. Remember the one radio station that every single person listens to all day, every day is WIIFM. What's in it for me? So don't tell me to enter all this data so you big boss can get reports tell me that I can enter data so my life, so I can get home to my kids, walk my dog, do whatever is important to me in my time. That's, that's what matters. So I hope that answers that, JR. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. I'm just going to screen share just to uh, f finish off today. So uh, uh, we've transform knowledge into skills by having the breakout rooms and having Jill's expertise and knowledge shared. We've had a think tank, we've done a group session, uh, we've just taken out our a, a, a takeouts. Uh, as an individual task for everyone, if you can sit after this session today and identify one personal or business improvement you could make by applying what you've learnt today, that would be really valuable. And then what might stop you from implementing this change? Uh, this, identifying some of the obstacles really can help with putting them aside and then focusing in on what you are wanting to do or change so have a think about those things when we finish today and uh, yes just say thank you and wow to Jill Walker for her expertise today Jill touched on some really important points uh, in in building your business and the value of, of keeping clients and uh, keeping nurturing your clients and prospects is so important. And that's what the CRM ultimately does. Uh, I'd just like to highlight the upcoming events we have for the BBG Next Tech Speakers Forum. On the 6th of October, Leah Zalums, who's a sales and leadership coach, is speaking on CEOs leading through uncertainty. And certainly that is what is happening at the moment uh, in our current situation. We've updated. Okay. And, and then on the 3rd of November, Karen Chaston from the People Profit Connections is speaking on how to easily motivate your employees whilst increasing profits. So well, thank you for attending everyone. And uh, uh, we really uh, hope you can join us again. And please thank Jill Walker for today's presentation.